Hello everyone and welcome to Split Second. This week we received a friend of ours to play with us. Val brought the Mormonator's Jessica Chrome control list. Our friend Diogo brought his Ikra and Dargo crazy combo list. Rodrigo went dumpster diving before the match and found a garbage Oscar rubbish reclaimer deck. An Elder brought his Lord of Tressorhorn in fact once again. Val is going first and Imulgan once, finding two islands and an exotic orchard for lands, with a talisman of creativity for ramp. Rhystic study to hopefully maintain his card advantage and if it all goes south, Wheel of Fortune can refill. Spellseeker can help him to find interaction or combo-oriented pieces. Diogo wasn't happy with his first mulligans, which led him down a path to five cards only. Single forest but with a carpet of flowers, elvish mystic and deathright shaman for ramp and hoping to draw into a tutor or dockside to get things going. He sent Crozen Wayfarer and Mox Opal to the bottom. Rodrigo mulligan once and found a Verdant Catacombs and Watery Grave for lands. Wish Claw Talisman can find him Thessa's Oracle to pair up with his Demonic Consultation, Delay for some stack interaction and Treasure Cruise and Secrets of the Dead for some card advantage in this discard heavy deck. Finally, Elder also mulligan once and found a City of Brass, Polluted Delta and Steam Vents for lands, with a Dark Ritual to accelerate into an early Bitter Blossom to help gather fodder for his commander's drawbacks. Since sometimes you need to go for it regardless. Cyclonic Rift to clear away for Tracy and Jessica's Will is there for some extra juice. Ready for this match? Ball starts the game with a simple island and passes. Diogo found a land and Arid Mesa that he cracks for a taiga and then casts a carpet of flowers. However, Ball responds with a swan song, having had some bad experience against that deck. Rodrigo plays a Verdant Catacombs and passes. Elder plays a Polluted Delta and cracks it for an Underground Sea. He then casts his Dark Ritual and finishes with a Bitter Blossom. Balan taps, draws, plays an Exotic Orchard and casts Talisman of Creativity, ending his turn. Diogo plays a Forest and casts a Birds of Paradise. He then casts a Deathrite Shaman and attacks Elder for 2 before passing. In his end step, Rodrigo cracks his Fetch for a Fetid Pulse before going to his turn. Rodrigo draws, plays an untapped Watery Grave paying to life and casts Jace Rin's Prodigy. We're back to Elder. He untaps and loses one life to create one fairy from his bitter blossom. He plays a City of Brass and casts Ledger Shredder for some digging power. Val gets to his turn, plays an Islet and casts an Arcane Signet. He then casts a Rhystic Study, triggering Ledger Shredder and Elder discards a Gemstone Caverns. We're back to Diogo's turn. He plays a Verdant Catacombs and casts an Elvish Mystic, triggering Rhystic and paying for it. Not yet finding payouts for all his mana, he simply attacks Ball for 2 and passes with a single card in hand. Rodrigo draws, plays an Exotic Orchard and ponders for his second, before also passing, holding that delay up. Elder untaps, loses one life and creates another fairy. He plays an untapped Steam Vent, paying two life and then casts a Dockside Extortionist. Rhystic triggers and he doesn't pay, as he needs all the mana for his commander, which he casts right after, triggering Shredder and Rhystic and once again unable to pay, and then he discards another land. Lord of Tressorhorn enters and triggers, and Elder targets Diogo with it since he only has one card in hand. In response, Diogo cracks his fetch to find a tapped Overgrown Tomb, and then Elder sacrifices two fairies, loses two life and Diogo draws two cards, before Elder passes the turn. Baal draws, plays a Training Center and casts a Malevolent Hermit, following that cast with a Spellseeker, triggering Shredder and Elder discards a Transmute Artifact. Spellseeker resolves and in response to his trigger, Rodrigo activates Jace, drawing and discarding Secrets of the Dead. Baal then searches for a Red Elemental Blast for some extra interaction. He passes and Diogo gets to his turn. He attacks Ball for two more damage, paying respects to his carpet and passes. In his end step, Rodrigo casts Mental Note, triggering Rhystic and paying for it. This helps him get stuff in his graveyard to then cast his commander. He draws for his turn, plays a City of Brass and casts his commander, Oscar Rubbish Reclaimer, for a mere two mana, triggering Rhystic and not paying, and after some pondering, Ball fires his Red Blast, as he expects Rodrigo to have a two mana counterspell, and he does, as he fires his delay, triggering Rhystic once again and the table does miss the shredded trigger. Rodrigo passes and we're back to Elder, who's enjoying spending most of his life untouched as he loses one more to his Bitter Blossom trigger. He casts a Mana Crit, Dream Rhystic and doesn't pay, as he follows it with a Jessica's Will, targeting Ball again and not paying for the Rhystic trigger, so he goes to 7 cards in hand. Shredder also triggered and Elder is said to have to discard, as all 3 cards in his hand are great, but he eventually discards a Cyclonic Rift. The Jessica's Will resolution actually came out to be pretty good, and Elder casts Yogmas Will, triggering Rhystic and paying for it. But his graveyard is already juicy, so Ball responds with his Pact of Negation, stopping him in his tracks. He sadly casts Caddis, Emberclaw Familiar, Trigon Rhystic and paying for it, and then proceeds to combat, attacking Rodrigo with his commander. Rodrigo likes the idea of not blocking, so Ball and Diogo also take 10 damage as collateral from Caddis. But before damage, Elder casts a Tented Strike on his commander. Oh lord! Rhystic triggers and he can't pay. 
Ball draws nothing and Diogo also has no interaction, but Rodrigo responds by activating Jace to draw a card and discard Fierce Guardianship, triggering Oscar and casting it from his graveyard on the strike. Restick triggers and he can't pay. Rodrigo takes 10 commander damage while Bal and Diogo take 10 regular damage from the Caddis trigger and Elder passes. Bal untaps and doesn't forget to pay for his pack this time. He draws and plays an untapped Sea Gate Reborn, paying 3 life. He casts a Lotus Petal and follows it with a Mana Vault, triggering Shredder and since Elder is Elbent he can adjust mills. Bal ponders for a second and then casts his Jeska Thrice Reborn, entering with one counter which he removes right away to kill Elvish Mystic, Birds of Paradise and Caddis and Diogo taps his dorks for Golgari mana in response. As Bal wishes to proceed steps, Diogo uses the black mana to activate Deathrite, exiling Elder's Jeska's will, and then the green he uses to help channel a Buzajo, targeting Ristic Study, and suddenly Diogo's Dargo loops have no Ristic to be worried about. Bal gets a Volcanic Island, and as he had one colorless mana floating from his mana vault, he casts his own Ledger Shredder, before passing. Diogo was heavily set behind with two less mana, so he simply draws and passes. Rodrigo draws and casts an Ancestral Recall, um, I mean Treasure Cruise, delving away all his graveyard. He plays his Kalintarn and then casts a Chrome Mox, triggering both Shredders and Ball discards a Wheel of Misfortune, an Elder a Blue March. Rodrigo then imprints it with a Wave Break Hippocamp, and then upticks Jace targeting Treasure Horn to lower his deadly power. We're back to Elder's turn, where he keeps taking damage, from the Crypt and then from Bitter Blossom. He draws and goes to combat, sending Tressy towards Jace, since an 8 power Tressoron, even pumped by an escaped Tainted Strike, is not lethal. We're on Ball's turn, he draws and takes one from the vault. Having found another tutor, he ponders his options and goes for it, casting a Gamble. It resolves and he searches for a Polluted Delta, and he randomly discards a Baron Master Wizard. Players ponder it could be one of the fetch cards, but notice right after he couldn't go for Dockside Loops at the moment. He plays the Polluted Delta and then casts a Merchant Scroll, triggering both Shredders and Elder discards a Command Tower, and Bal responds to his trigger, cracking his delta to find a Mystic Sanctuary, triggering and putting Pact of Negation on top of his library, which he then draws and discards a Weir of Invention. With the scroll, he searches for a Dramatic Reversal, and after that he casts a Transmute Artifact, and Rodrigo is forced to respond with his Mana Drain, to which Bal promptly responds with his Pact of Negation, sealing the deal. He searches for Isochron Scepter to play, sacrificing his Talisman, and then imprints his Dramatic Reversal, which now allows him to generate infinite mana, through the activation of Isochron Scepter and untapping his two rocks, which generate more mana than the needed to activate it again. With infinite mana, he is able to cast and recast Jeska to kill his opponents to death. GG. This was a fairly short match, so he decided to play another one. This time, Rodrigo won the dice roll and is going first. He kept his first 7 with a single command tower, but with a mana crit for ramp. Ponder can help him dig, and Magus of the Bazaar is one of the best discard outlets to abuse his Oscar's ability. An early opposition agent can steal a fetch or a tutor from his opponents, and he has also Chain of Vapor for interaction, and Jace Wielder of Mysteries as a combo piece. Elder also kept his first 7 with the Prismatic Vista, Reflecting Pool, and Command Tower for lands. Caddis found its way back again, and he now has Dress Down to overcome his commander's drawbacks, and Dark Visual to help cast him one turn earlier. Jessica's Will also found its way back. Bal was also fairly happy with his first 7, having a Bloodstained Mire and Prismatic Vista for lands, with a Seagate Restoration as a possible land drop or something to pitch to Force of Negation, Lotus Petal and Sol Ring for ramp and Brainstorm for some card draw. Last but not least, Diogo Mulligan once, having found the bread and butter of the deck, Dockside Extortionist. Mana Confluence, Verdant Catacombs, Gaius Cradle and Bosejo for lands. Sacrifice for extra mana and Gamble can find Eldritch Evolution to set everything up for a turn to win. Ready for round 2? Rodrigo starts the game with a Command Tower and casts a Mana Crypt, to then cast a Magus of the Bazaar, passing the turn. Elder draws, plays a Command Tower and casts a Jewel Lotus, ending his turn. Bal plays a Prismatic Vista and cracks it for an island, casting a Lotus Petal and still follows it with a Soul Ring before passing. Diogo is quite happy with so many artifacts in play so far. He plays a Windswept Teeth and cracks it for a Taiga, to then cast a Gamble, searching for an Eldritch Evolution to hopefully win in his next turn. He sets them up and randomly discards Eldritch Evolution. <laughs> he sadly passes the turn. Rodrigo untaps and wins his first crit roll. He ponders for a moment and activates his Magus, drawing two and discarding three cards with two different mana values. He then plays an island and casts his commander, Oscar Rubbish Reclaimer and with his last floating mana, he still casts a Mana Vault and passes with 3 cards in hand. Elder plays a Reflecting Pool and then passes, sneakily waiting to go for it. Bal plays a Bloodstained Mire and cracks it for a Volcanic Island, to then cast his commander Crown, Ludovic's Opus. 
He goes to combat and attacks Diogo, as he is on Naos, and then passes. Diogo gets to his turn and plays a Mana Confluence to then cast his Dockside Extortionist. It enters and the table is fearful about it, but Diogo brings up that he really needed that Elish Evolution, so no one responds to it and Diogo creates 4 treasures, ending his turn. Rodrigo this time loses his crit roll. He simply draws and promptly passes, as he can do a lot at instant speed with his Magus and Commander online. In his end step though, Elder casts a Dress Down, then goes to his turn ready to bypass his Commander's drawback. He draws and plays a City of Brass, followed by a Dark Ritual. Tás greasy. Mm -hmm. Então, eu sou um lambão. Espera aí, espera aí, espera aí. Não, vou responder esse Dark Ritual. Eu top de game mental nesse step. E já não vai embora. Well, the time limit step slows down Elder's plans, but he can still cast his Lord of Tresor Horn. However, after some pondering, Diogo channels a Bozajon in response, targeting Dress Down, and Elder searches for an underground sea, and once Lord of Tresoron enters the battlefield, history repeats itself, where the player disrupting his ETB gets to draw two cards. While was playing EZ with four cards in hand, Diogo was going last with an Entomb-like gamble and Rodrigo had more potential cards and mana than everyone else. We are on Ball's turn, he plays his Cephalid Coliseum and casts a Phantasmal Image. However, in response, Diogo casts a Sacrifice, sacrificing Dockside as an additional cost, to gain two black mana, and this way deprive Ball of his attempt at cloning it, so he eventually copies Magus of the Bazaar. He attempts to move steps and Diogo casts his second Entomb in this game, with his floating mana, Crown triggers and Ball draws. In response, however, Rodrigo casts an Opposition Agent. And in response to the agent, Ball casts a Brainstorm, in case he finds a Mystical Tutor. Opo resolves and then Entomb also resolves, so Rodrigo looks at Diogo's humble hand and then searches for a Vampiric Tutor, to help him find his combo pieces. With a new round of priority, Ball casts a Jewel Lotus, and follows it with his Jessica, Trice Reborn, entering with two counters. He down takes her to ping Magus, Opposition Agent and Diogo directly, and in response, Rodrigo activates the Magus to draw two and discard three. Oscar triggers for each discarded card, and Rodrigo casts Spell Seeker from his graveyard, triggering Crown for a card. But with Vampiric Tutor up, Diogo fires a Pyroblast on it. As Bal wants to once again to move steps, Rodrigo uses his last colorless floating mana to attempt to cast Vampiric Tutor, but this time Bal responds with his Swan Song, and Rodrigo promptly asks not to be targeted anymore with just two cards in hand. Bal can then attack and sends Crown towards Rodrigo, who doesn't block, and he then ends his turn. Diogo gets to his turn, plays a Gaia's Cradle and casts an Ignoble Hierarch, sadly passing with two cards in hand. We're back to Rodrigo. He is now safe from his crypt, but takes one from the vault after drawing. He finds and casts a Demonic Tutor, to which Ball responds with a Force of Negation, pitching Seagate Restoration. Rodrigo sadly plays a Blood Saint Meyer and passes with a single card in hand. Elder gets to his turn, plays a Badlands and casts a Gilded Drake, entering and exchanging control of Crown so he can now cast Jessica's Will, choosing both modes. Slightly not so good is the fact that Diogo is the person with most cards in hand, just two. <laughs> he mainly wanted to dig, and at least got rid of three dead cards here and then casts his caddies before passing. Mal gets to his turn and casts a Will of Fortune. Rodrigo responds by cracking his fetch to get an Underground Sea. Since he lost access to his crown, a reset where everyone draws new 7 is his best option. Mal then casts his Lion's Eye Diamond, crown triggers and Elder draws a card, Ball then hopes to dig for his Underworld Breach combo by activating Magus of the Bazaar, drawing 2 and discarding 3. He then plays an Ancient Tomb and casts Windfall, holding priority and cracking his LED for triple red mana. And then in response, Diogo floats 1 green mana and casts Culling the Weak, sacrificing his Hierarch for 4 black mana, and suddenly Ad Nauseam is a possibility. Windfall now resolves and everyone discards their hands and draws 8 new cards. Oscar triggers for the discarded cards and, in response to them, Ball casts a Dramatic Reversal, to which Rodrigo responds with a muddled mixture, but in response, Ball casts a Misdirection, pitching a Negate and changing the target of Muddle to Misdirection, fizzling it as it resolves. Dramatic Reversal resolves and Ball activates Magus of the Bazaar once again, drawing 2 and discarding 3 lands. With some extra floating mana, he now casts a Wheel of Misfortune, and here we go again. Everyone chooses their votes and Diogo votes the highest, losing 11 life and everyone but Elder discards and draws new 7 cards. Suddenly Ad Nauseam seems less likely. Oscar triggers for all the discarded cards and Rodrigo stacks them so he can cast Jewel Lotus, triggering Crown for a card. He then casts Lotus Petal and cracks it for Black to be able to cast Unearth from the discarded trigger to return Spellseeker to the battlefield, triggering and searching for a Demonic Consultation, so the end seems near. 
but didn't find Underworld Breach, so he casts a Gamble and is forced to search for a Force of Will, hoping to stop Rodrigo. He randomly discards a Gilda Drake and goes to combat with the one he controls, attacking Diogo, which also didn't find anything for his floating mana. Diogo gets to his turn, plays a Command Tower and casts a Crozen Wayfarer. He then casts a Birds of Paradise, triggering Crown for a draw. He then floats two green with Cradle and sacrifices the Wayfarer to put Marsh Flats into play and cracks it for a Bayou. He is hoping to go for a win now, as he casts Diabolic Intent, sacrificing the bird as an additional cost. However, Rodrigo doesn't hesitate as he casts Fierce Guardianship. With his plans foiled, Diogo casts a Finoran Elves and follows it with his commander Dargo, sacrificing the Elves as an additional cost, and then passes, hoping to see another turn. Rodrigo gets to his turn and manages to win his crit roll. He draws and takes one from the vault. He plays a River of Tears and then casts his own Diabolic Intent, sacrificing Spellseeker as an additional cost. He searches for Thassa's Oracle to hand, which he casts right away, triggering Crown for a draw, but Elder finds nothing. It enters play, triggering and he responds to it with a demonic consultation, winning the… nothing, just kidding, as Bal responds to it with his Force of Will, pitching the Blue March. Oracle trigger results for 3 Devotion, and Rodrigo passes. With this twist of events, Elder goes for his turn, pretty happy about it. He draws, plays a Swamp and then casts a Lotus Petal. He follows it with a Mox Diamond, discarding a Wooded Foothills. He now casts Underworld Breach. Players are apprehensive as he goes into combat, attacking Bal with his own Chrome. Bal declares no blockers and before damage, Elder casts Tainted Strike, targeting Chrome. Then he escapes Tainted Strike, targeting Chrome. He still escapes Tainted Strike, once again targeting Chrome. As it turns out, all of Bal's wheels fill this graveyard just enough for him to escape a 4th, 5th and 6th time, making it so Chrome hits Bal for 10 lethal infect damage, killing him and triggering Cadiz which uses Crumb's last known information to deal 10 infect damage to Diogo and Rodrigo. GG. Thank you for joining us for today's match, everyone. Mystic Study was key in providing Bal card advantage through his first match, controlling his opponents enough to allow for the Isle Rev win through several tutors. Game 2 was longer than expected due to the risky gambling luck of Diogo, and eventually Jesk cleared most of the board before Elder stealing Crown, which was Bal's main card advantage, at that point forcing him to chain wheels into trying to find Breach, which gave the win to the next three players in turn order, and one after the other tried to go for it, eventually being stopped just before Elder found enough fast mana to be able to scale up a poisonous Crown. We'd like to start the credits by thanking our current patrons, and especially Izanagi, TJ Rap, Mike Per, Ajimo, Dragon House Cat, V, RJ, Hitted Chill, Pina, Ricardo, Dragonsteak, Katarina, Michael Bowen, Super Scaldi, Dog, Wyatt, Wicked, and Zinan, our stack breakers. If you want to support us, you can do so by liking this video, subscribing, or by becoming a patron yourself. If you want to go through other Commander adventures, click one of the videos on the right. If you want to talk with us about our games or other EDH-related matters, join us on Discord. Join us again next week for a new set of Commanders and more decisive plays. See you all then!